Um, Were you surprised with the yeah. out in front for so long? Not really. I mean, I spoke to him before the race and yep. he, was, he was saying that he hasn't ridden and less than 650 kilometres a week on the bike for 12 weeks. So, and apparently he got top 15 in the Australian Time Trial Championships not long ago. So, yep. As I said, you, know, you always get guys coming out of the box like everyone says, oh, on paper you should be the favourite. But there's no favourites because you don't know what someone's preparation has been. You don't know how fit people are or, um, you know, guys like myself and Griff have obviously had an extended break after the season in America. Yeah. And even though it's the height of summer here, it's really not even the start of our season. So it's, it's a hard race for that reason. It's just the muscle memory and, and also just mentally remembering how much a race hurts. I think. But I'm really happy with that. That's a really solid hit out. Especially Especially considering I was in the US, you know, for a week, a week ago, and all the travel, but the legs felt really fresh, and I'm really happy. I think, that, I think the training has been good the last five or six weeks. I think I've done a really good block of training. I think, I think you can see that today. Yeah, you know what? I didn't feel great, but that's. I think that's where you notice it is in the transitions. Like this, when you haven't raced, you notice that the first couple of minutes in the swim at the start, and then you, you notice the first five or ten k on the bike, and also in the run and. Yeah, no, never felt comfortable to be honest. The first lap of the run, but the third lap, you looked. Did I? Well, second, second lap, second lap felt the best. Yeah. Sorry, second lap felt the best. So after about six or seven k, I felt like I got my legs and yeah, felt comfortable. But then I guess the lack of miles showed at the last two or three k. Probably wasn't as strong as I, as I normally would finish these races, but you know, I was lucky I had a couple of minute buffer. And, you know, I know Griff's probably the, he's on the same sort of upswing as me. He's he's training for pretty much the same race as I am. So. He had a great race, and I mean, I think he's very underrated. I mean, he finished ninth in Clearwater last year, which is the World Championships for this distance, and he got a four-minute penalty. I mean, he had the second quickest run of the day. Yeah, I mean, he... I thought he would have met or not. I mean, I was there watching, doing some commentary, and I wasn't the only one. Greg Welsh, a lot of people thought he was really hardly done by because there was a pack of 50 guys, and two guys got a draft penalty coming into T2. It was just ridiculous, and I mean, I really felt bad for him because... I've seen how much work he's done, particularly in Boulder. I've trained a lot with him, and uh, he would have been a worthy medal winner at Worlds last year, and he should have been. I mean, he had the second quickest run in an unbelievable de um, deep field there. And he, I mean, he got off the bike at like 30th after the penalty and still ran in a ninth spot. So, I mean, he's a great athlete. You look, just look at his resume. He's, he's won five or six 70.3s in podiums every time he races. So, yeah, um, it was a good field, you know, and, and Burke was in there. I mean, it was a very deep field, Matt. White. White. Um, a lot of guys there, Clayton Fatale had a great race, he's very fit, he's obviously working on his run, he's trying to model himself on Craig Walton. I mean it's it's hard to break away on the bike but I think if you have that gap out of the water you're sort of out of sight Yes. and everyone starts watching each other in the group and obviously we're getting splits to him and you're not letting him go but you're immediately concerned with who's around you and you look around you see Shorto's in the bunch and Griff's in the bunch and Burkle's in the bunch and you know they're all in the bunch and but he rode strong, take nothing away from me. It's not like we let him go. He he just rode away. And um, after speaking or well, hearing what kind of mileage he's been doing on the bike, I figured it'd be really, really strong. And he was. And, you know, when I saw him at the first turnaround on the run, I thought he looked strong on the run too, but that kind of an effort really takes its toll on you, especially just mentally being out in front the whole way on your own. Um, so, yeah, but he had a great race, and I mean, there's, there's a lot of good guys coming up through the ranks, so. Yeah. What's next for you? Um, I don't know, I'd sort of, I've entered to do the Aussie Long Course Champs, but I tried to do that last year, race here and then there, and it was just a, I mean, I think after the travel, like, you get away with it the first weekend, but that travel will catch up with me at some point. I really need to just knuckle down and stay in the one place and do some training, so. The next definite race is a 70.3 in Singapore at the end of March. Which is a race I did last year and won, so I'll be trying to defend there as well. And, and then we head to the US in mid April, so and do it all again. That's I guess Singapore really signals the start of the season proper. Um, do Singapore, head to the US, do St. Croix. Um, just real, all the real big 70.3s that get all the media coverage and have all the prize money. And they'll be great fields, Rev 3 is a new big race. It's, um, it's got a lot of money, gets a great feel. I'll do a few other big distance races as well, Lifetime Fitness in Minnesota and maybe Philadelphia. Um, 
And it's very similar, like I like to race on similar weekends, just obviously you know, you set your schedule and you work backwards, you work out what the main races are and you work backwards from that, so obviously I want to have great form in June, July and I want to have even better form in October, so you know, you, you set that in stone and then you work backwards, so um, just come off a good break and you know, I feel really happy with where I'm at, I, I had a six week break after Hawaii which was longer than normal but you know, it was really good, I think, you know, it's, I like to try a few different things as well. Um, <clears throat> trying a few different things in training this year, just to keep it interesting. And not, nothing major, but the schedule will be very similar. I'll go to the races where I won last year and try and defend, and I think I won 5 or 6, 70.3, so I'll go back to those and usually just try and race on the same weekends, because that fits in just with the way I've scheduled and periodised the, the season, and um, they're really happy with it, I mean... To win like that, I wouldn't say I felt great. I felt great on the second lap of of the run. Yep. Um, the different parts of the bike, I felt really strong as well. Um, and the second half of the swim, I felt good. I felt a bit lethargic at the beginning, but, but that's why you race. You've got to blow those cobwebs. I mean, you, you, you try and simulate racing and training, but there's, there's nothing like racing. Um, at some point, you've got to start your season. You know, as I said, I'm glad to to race here. It's, I've had a good sort of record down here. Won here last year and had a few top threes in the Accenture and St George Formula One and it's just a great venue with the hill and the beach, beautiful, it's usually good weather. And I don't get to race in Australia, you know, it's nice well, to have that crowd, so. Nice to yeah, well, it's nice to be here. Well, well done. Did you get that hill on the bike? Did you go, oh no, not you again? Uh, you know what, I was ready for it. Yeah. I mean, it's tough, and I, I like that in a bike course. So I like, that's, that's one of the things that's really great and unique about this course. You, you've got everything. So you get the hill at the start, and then a little few corners and a technical section through the gardens. Then you get down Port Arlington Road, and you've got a lot, you've got a bit of wind, but it's, it's, it's more powerful, you know, it's more power man sort of course out there. But then you've got the hill to break it up as well, and a few undulations towards the turnaround at Leopold. So. I kind of like that hill, it does hurt, I mean, it's, it's never easy, but it just breaks it up a bit. And, um, yeah, it's, it's one of the unique things about this course, it's got a little bit, same with the run as well, you've got some flat sections, you've got some steep uphills, some steep downhills. you got this bit along, he's great with the crowd, but there's a lot of sand, so it's slippery. And then you've got the cinders through the guard, so, you know, it's a, oh, sorry, it's a, it's a challenging, pretty challenging course, but, um, yeah, it's a good test, I think, I like a few undulations in the run, I like that cinder section through the garden, you got a bit of a downhill and an uphill, downhill, up, uphill. Buddy. It's more of a strength course, which sort of fits in with my training at this time of year. Crowley, the conditions today are vastly different from last year. Yeah. Did that aid you with your limited preparation for this race? Um, oh, you know what? You just, after being a professional for some, you just get used to racing in, in anything. And last year, I think there was no wind, so. But the trade-off was there was a bit of rain, so you had to be cautious. And when there's water on the road, that slows. Obviously, there's more rolling resistance that slows things down. Um, I don't know if it aided me or, I mean, I think the, the where I struggle my first race of the season is always, as we said before, the top end thing. So, you know, the start of the swim, everyone goes out flat out, and the start of the bike, and then the start of the run, they're, they're usually the three spots. When you haven't raced for four months, that's where you struggle a little bit, but to be honest, I feel pretty strong. I'm really happy. Same as last year, I mean, you always downplay it because you just never know. Mm. Um, you know, I pride myself on the fact that when I train, I train hard, and now it's like I said, when I say I'm, I'm not fit, I shouldn't say that. It's, it's, it's just I'm not kind of fit. It's, there's a difference. I'm probably only 5 or 10% off it. And by necessity, you can't be 100% fit 100% of the time. So it's only February. A lot of big races to come, but I think I'm really, really happy. I feel really strong aerobically. I feel great. I've done a lot of good work since Christmas. And yeah, it felt great.